Welcome to section 8.5. So we're going to start out by looking at the transformations of the graph. And um, I'm just going to combine this with what we've talked about in pretty much every chapter this whole year about how the parent graphs are transformed when you do certain things to the equations. So as we look at the sine, sine of a sine b x minus h. So that's just like a standard form. So we're going to look at what happens when the a is something different than a 1, or when the b is something different than a 1. And then you always have like sine of x, and x may be a degree or in radians. And then h is also going to be um, when it's bigger than a 0, or something different than a 0, or when k is bigger than a 0 or something different than a zero. And those should look familiar because we've talked about H and K throughout the entire year. And you should also um, remember what happens when you minus from the X. Remember that's going to shift to either left or right. And when you add to the function that's going to either, if it's positive, it's going to make it go up and uh, if it's negative, it's going to make it go down. So this should all be familiar to you, nothing new really, we're just combining it to the sine and cosine function. So how do you graph these? Um, everyone should have access to a graphing calculator. If not, the Desmos calculator, D-E-S-M-O-S dot com, is excellent. I use it all the time. In fact, I'm going to use it in just a second to show you the graphs on here. So. So uh, step one, identify the amplitude. So amplitude is the lettering front of the function. The period 2 pi divided by b. So when you know um, b, the, the number that is after the function but before the x, so it's like the coefficient of x. The horizontal shift at h, so this is what's going to move up left and right. And the vertical shift, k, is going to move it up and down. You draw the horizontal line y equals k, that's called the midline. So the midline of the graph is whatever k is right here, that's the horizontal line for the midline of the graph. The five key points of translating are the um, midline, the amplitude, the periods, horizontal and vertical. So let's look at what that means for graphing. So let's say we have this equation right here. Graph g of x equals 2 sine of 4x plus 3. So right here I'm just going to make some mental notes to myself. 2 is the amplitude. So that's how tall the graph is going to get. 4, that represents part B. 2 is A, 4 was B, and then 3 is what's being added. So that's a K, K being added. So, and the graph looks like this. So notice the amplitude is 2. So if we look on here, the midline is at 3, because it's between 2 and 4. Midline is at 3. The height is here at 5. So from 3 to 5, the amplitude is 2. So that's where we see the 2 in the graph. 4 represents B. So B is 4, and what that means is you take 2 pi. Remember how we do this. We take 2 pi, and we divide it by B, which is 4. So that says that um, there is a cycle or a period every pi halves. So, and in my graph on here, it doesn't show what pi is, but remember that that pi is 3.14. So that's right here. Um, that's, so it's showing that there's two cycles at, at um, pi. So there's one cycle at pi halves. So that's where we see the pi halves right there. Pi halves would be 3.14 divided by 2, which is 1 point something, which is that point right there. And then the 3, notice 
The midline typically is down here at zero, but now the midline has been shifted up to positive three. So that's what the graph would look like. Let's look at another example. Five cosine one half x minus three pi. What does this look like in a graph? Well now, stand this down a little bit. So the five in front of the function says that it has a height of five. So is, um, instead of being a one, it's now has it's going up clear up to the five. Uh, this doesn't have anything added after the function, so after the parentheses, so the midline is still right here at y equals 0. The 1 half, so if we were to find the period, we would take 2 pi and divide it by 1 half. But that's the same as multiplying by 2. So this says that there's a period every 4 pi. So 4 times pi is going to be like 4 times 3 point something. So notice that this is one complete cycle at 12 point something. My graph doesn't go out that far. But we can see that that's where the 1 half comes in. Is It's actually making this cycle very spread out. x minus 3 pi. So this is going to be the horizontal shift. So this horizontal shift is going, uh, it's minus 3 pi. So you could think of it that it is, it's going in the right 3 pi, or it's being subtracted 3, 3 pi, or it's going in the right at negative 3 pi, but it's being subtracted 3 pi. So it's shifting to the right 3 pi. And 3 times pi is like 9 point something, because typically, notice, cosine um, begins on um, the, the height of the amplitude on the y-axis. So it is being shifted. So instead of starting right here, now the start of it is right over here, and 3 times pi is 9 point something, so that's where that point comes in. It's right there. It's being shifted to the right 3 pi units. So that's what the graph would now look like. Okay, so just um, some quick review. Let's look at these, these graphs right here. Cosine of x plus 4, the only thing that's being changed is being shifted up 4. So instead of cosine crossing right here, it's up 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So the cosine of x plus 4 would look like this. It's still one complete um, unit in 2 pi. So it goes one complete cycle or one complete period for 2 pi. Number 6 over here, half sine of x minus 2 pi. So the half in front tells the amplitude. So instead of going all the way up to 1, now its height is only 1 half above and below the midline. And then it has this minus pi halves. So the sine function, the midline, or the, the beginning of it would typically be right here but it's being shifted to the right, pi halves, and pi divided by 2 is like 1 point something, so this point right here has now been shifted over to that point right there. Number 7, the sine of x plus pi minus 1. So the amplitude is still 1, and the period is still 2 pi, but it has been shifted to the left, because adding the pi is going to shift it to the left, 3.14. So this, the point that should have been right here has now been shifted over here at approximately 3.14. So it's been shifted to the left, pi units, or 
and it's also been shifted down one. Actually, this one has been shifted up one, so I'm just going to change that so that it matches our graph. So I put that in um, wrong. So it has been shifted up one, and there's our graph. Okay, now for a little review um, on graphing functions, a little bit more here. So let's look at these functions right here. Now if you want, try these on your own before I show you the results, or maybe graph them yourself. But here's what the graphs look like. 3 minus sine of x. So this time it's... Um, You could think of this one as, well, first I have the negative sine of x. Well, the negative sine of x, instead of going up, as now going down first and then up, is still sine of x, so our complete period is 2 pi, which is about 6.28. So it's still about right here. But now it has this 3 being added to it, so the midline goes from 0 up to 3. Number two would look like this. The amplitude is two units high. So it, instead of being a one unit, is now two above the midline. Cosine of 4x. So notice how many cycles. So cosine starts up here, goes down. There's one, two, three, four. There are four periods or cycles. Um, between 0 and 2 pi. 2 pi is at 6.28, so right there. Number 3. Number 3, we have 2 thirds cosine. So instead of going up 1 unit, it goes up 2 thirds units. The x plus pi halves. This is a cosine function, so cosine should have started here on the um, x-axis, but it's been shifted pi halves to the left, because this is plus pi halves, so it's being shifted to the left pi halves, and it's being shifted down 3, so instead of the midline at 0, it is down here at 3. Looking at number 4, let's move this out of the way, we have 2 minus 5 half sine of x minus pi over 4. So first, let's talk about what this 2 does. Well, the 2 basically shifts it up 2. So instead of the midline being at 0, it is now at positive 2. Because it's minus 5, five halves the sine, that means that the period is now pi divided by 5 halves. So let's look at the period goes from here to here. Which instead of 6.28, that would be about 5 halves of a regular period. And the x is being subtracted by pi 4, so it's being added pi so instead of this point right here being on the y equals, um, or the, yeah, the x equals 0, the y axis, it's being shifted to the right, pi force. Now the beauty of all of this is you will have access to a graphing calculator, become familiar with the graphing calculator, and that will really help you. Okay, really quick. We are going to review expanding log expressions. So look these over and let's um, review them really quick. So the first one, expand it out, it would be log base 2 of 3 plus the power in the 2, or the x squared comes out in front, so 2 log base 2 of x. This one, we have this value right here that's being divided, so it separates out here. Then we have the square root of 2x cubed would be 1 half, break out the 2, 3 
pounds LX for 